Disney Lucasfilm. You will never find more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Where's Hal, everybody, and welcome to, to another video. As the uh, TV show Ahsoka concluded, there, of course, is more and more talk on the internet about uh, Star Wars and the fate of Star Wars and uh, the future of Star Wars and where it is going. Well, of course, it is going nowhere nice. And it is only understandable with the way Disney have established their own new fake Star Wars franchise, as I do call it, a cheap Chinese knockoff of the original thing. And now Star Wars is of course an obviously very controversial topic, even more controversial uh, than uh, the writings of Professor Tolkien that I very often cover, and uh, the fandom of Professor Tolkien is very much united in many cases, uh, <laughs> about, at I would say, 90% as far as, for example, the Rings of Power goes, but Star Wars has always divided people, and it's always nice to make divisive videos, but... To get to the matter of hand, uh, why is it that uh, Disney Star Wars is not such a success? Now, there was an article on by Bounding into Comics just yesterday or today, and they were talking about how uh, a Star Wars producer and also the wife of uh, George Lucas absolutely annihilated Disney Star Wars in their statements and uh, did say that Dave Filoni and uh, John Favreau and J.J. Abrams, no, they were specifically talking about J.J. Abrams and um, the other guy, Ryan Johnson and Kathleen Kennedy, right, the people behind the sequel trilogy, that they didn't understand the story. Well, quite obviously. And we can talk in length about the fact that those p movies were poorly made and that everything, or 90% really, of everything that Disney does has full of, uh, full, you know, I mean, is full of plot holes and uh, inconsistencies and uh, they are constantly break not only the uh, original canon but uh, their own established Disney canon. Just look at the Obi-Wan Kenobi TV show. Those episodes were contradicting each other other in and in between the episodes and within the episodes i mean one episode was contradicting itself from the beginning to the end it was it was it was very very poorly made but the core lies in the destruction of the old star wars on the old characters which is what disney are trying to do now they will never destroy star wars in the hearts of true fans I mean, you can always go back and rewatch the original trilogy. And for those of you who love the prequels, such as I do, do go back and uh, rewatch the prequels. If you love the expanded universe, the original pre Disney one, such as I do, do go and reread the books, reread the comics, replay the video games. It, it is as easy as that. But what they tried to do in the new movies, in the sequel trilogy, is get rid of all the old characters that have been popular extremely popular since 1977 and they have become an inseparable part of pop culture and even culture on earth in general everybody knows darth vader if you show a kid in africa darth vader they will say oh yeah 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 darth vader you might have not seen a Star Wars film ever in your entire life, but you will know who Darth Vader is. It's the same with uh, some of the other iconic, fictitious characters like Superman. Everybody knows Superman. Everybody knows the logo. People wear the logo on the t-shirts, never having read a Superman comic book in their entire lives. Never having seen a Superman film in their entire lives. It's just the part of culture on Earth. And if those characters are as popular as those characters in the original Star Wars, like Obi-Wan Kenobi, Master Yoda, Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, so on and so forth, if you try to stamp on the character, you will enrage the fans. If you destroy something, or if you try to destroy something that people love, what do you think will happen, eh? they will get angry. So what they did in the sequels, and I don't think that's a spoiler anymore, years later. So they first just got rid of uh, Han Solo, like absolutely got rid of him. He got offed by his own son. 
they uh, had to, unfortunately, unfortunately, they had to send off Leia. That wasn't their fault, of course. The you know actress Carrie Fisher passed away, but still, they sent her away in and not a nice fashion. But uh, let me tell you what, I think they would have done that anyway. And then, of course, famously, what they did to Luke Skywalker is 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 shameful. That is abhorrent. They made him into the, a complete opposite of every of, of of what everybody was expecting. They made Luke Skywalker into a a striking opposite of what everybody wanted. Everybody wanted to see Luke Skywalker as a full-fledged seasoned Jedi master, the rebuilder of the Jedi Order, the hero, the one who everybody admires. And what what did they do? They made him into a senile old man drinking green milk. So and then in the other films they took Lando Calrissian, they made him into an extremely unlikable character whatever you think about his orientation it's not about his orientation it's about it's about portraying a character of billy d williams as an annoying prick and i'm not saying anything against the actor who portrayed the new lando calrissian the young one is the writing is the directing so it's not really the new characters because you see uh, a success of those products that uh, are really not about the original characters and that are side stories. Because one of the uh, things that the um, that people who are pro Disney what 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 they always say in Disney's defense is well, expanded universe also had stories about different characters. Yes, many of them enjoyable ones. Some of them are my most favorite Star Wars stories. But they never try to annihilate the set canon of the original characters. So just look at, for example, if we're talking about Disney, look what's the most popular of all Disney products. It's, it's the first and the second season of The Mandalorian. The first and most of the second season, they it just didn't have anything to do with the original characters. It was about completely new characters, and people loved those two seasons. And in the end, they brought Luke Skywalker the way everybody wanted to see him. Oh yes, they fooled a lot of people, even myself for a bit, but by, by this whole scene. Because this was the depiction of the Luke Skywalker that everybody wanted to see. Then they took it further, unfortunately. <laughs> If they just stopped there, it would be like, fine, fine Amundo. And then Andor is very much popular. Well, Andor is a, a, is a TV show about a side character in a movie that serves as a prequel to A New Hope. And Andor itself is a prequel to <laughs> Rogue One. That has got nothing to do with Luke, that has got nothing to do with Han, that has got nothing to do with Leia or Vader. People loved it. People even loved Rogue One. Because it was about the people who stole the plans to the Death Star. Yes, yes, there was a lot of plot holes in that film, and I don't consider it to be Star Wars either, because it's Disney, but... The fact is that a lot of people loved Rogue One. And even people who are against Disney are saying, well, Rogue One, I could watch and rewatch. So there are redeeming qualities, according to people, to Rogue One, to Andor, to Mandalorian, because those shows were better, clearly, and films better than uh, the sequel trilogy. And, for example, Obi-Wan Kenobi, so on and so forth. And they did not annihilate the original characters. And the grandest, the greatest, the most important annihilation of an established character in my own personal eyes of European law is the show Obi-Wan Kenobi. And that is what broke me. And that's why I don't make any more Star Wars reviews. So, yeah, let me know in the comments down below what you think about this entire matter. And that will be all. Thank you very much for watching and may the Force be with you. Bye.